Good morning. Welcome to Grace for Today. Blessings, everybody. I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praises shall continually be in my mouth. What's in your mouth? Praises of the Lord. What's in your mouth? The praises of the Lord. God bless you. We're so glad to be here. It's another day's journey, and we are glad about it. We are thankful for all that the Lord has done and all that he is doing. God is doing a new thing. You say, God, the scripture says there is no new thing under the sun. It sure does. It ain't new to God. It's new to us. This is a day that he has made that's new to us. God bless each and every one of you. This is a day you haven't seen before, but we are grateful for every day that he gives us. God bless you and good morning. Hey, everybody. Good morning to you. Blessings. Good morning, good morning, good morning. I am so grateful for all that the Lord has done. I've been waiting for y'all. Okay, all right, so I have been waiting, but I just kind of made sure I was in place. So, good morning. Hey, y'all. Uh, I'm gonna give y'all another 30 seconds, and then I'm going to get started. Uh, we'll have life class, L-I-F-E, live in faith every day. I know that we have graduations going on, so congratulations to all the graduates. I know we have some of the young people from our church will be graduating. We are super excited. We'll be celebrating them on this Sunday morning. Um, I won't make it to some of their little gra their receptions, but I will be blessing them on Sunday because we are super excited for their accomplishments and we want to encourage them to keep going forward because God has plans for them. Hey, Brenda, God has plans for them. There's a song, um, oh goodness, I can't remember who it's by, but it says, he has, God has, he has plans for me. He has plans for me. Bigger than my wildest dreams. Okay, anyway. So, but he has plans for them. Yes, he does. God has plans. Don't you ever forget it. Doesn't matter what their lives were like. What matters is that God has plans for them. He does. He has plans that we don't even understand everything, but he has plans. He has plans. I want to tell y'all who sings that because it matters that God has plans. Here it is. It's by a Rend Collection, R-E-N-D. Y'all want to listen to it. Go catch that. Rend, R-E-N-D Collection. It is a wonderful song. He has plans for me. Got plans for you too. Let's get started. Destiny Destroy Destroyers. Listen, we've moved on. Samuel is at the house of, Levi, of Eli, and he is living there. But I'm talking today about the condition of the house of God. The condition, the spiritual condition. And you know, as I was preparing, I was thinking about the condition of Israel and what's going on and uh, of the sons of Levi. And we're looking at 1 Samuel chapter 2 is where we are. We're looking at verses 12 through 17. Um, and I really want to look at this because sometimes, and we look at the world and the world gets so uh, disillusioned and um, uh, concerned and become uh, annoyed with the church as we see it. And they don't want to come to church and they get so perplexed and don't see the purpose that they just quit coming and they just figure there's no purpose. But beloved, just like we see here, God will raise up a generation that will obey. He will raise up a Samuel. He will raise up a people who will pursue him with passion. Thank you for sharing as soon as you come on. Hey, we have life class Saturday at 1030. I don't know if I finished that statement. Um, but we have life class Saturday at 1030. So y'all join me then if you can. But I want to just start here and then I want to read a little bit because I've, I've been studying, trying to make sure that I could clearly articulate the posture uh, of, of Israel at this time and understand that Eli, the scripture tells us, was old, which meant he was relying upon his sons to carry on. The scripture talks about, you understand, I'm sure, that Eli uh, was following the Levitical priesthood and the Lord told Aaron that he would always have some of his family upon leading um, the, the, as, as priests in Israel. But you understand that the children of is that that the Le, the Levites, the judges, the um the priests 
were during Eli's time became so evil that God had to end what he had promised and bring in a Samuel. God brought in a Samuel. So let's read here. And I want to read a little bit more, but I want us to understand that God does not say it's okay. And, and we will compare this even to today. I know that many of you have heard about uh, the awful things that happen in churches in different. Good morning, Kaysen. Good morning to all of our children. Y'all have, I know school is almost over. God bless the teachers. God bless the children. God bless the mamas and the daddies. But we, we understand that looking in these scriptures, we see that God does not ignore what's going on. He provides someone else, something else that lines up with his posture of holiness. He doesn't change holiness. He doesn't change what he's still calling for. He still calls for a holiness, even if it doesn't uh, resemble it at that house. He will clean house and raise up a generation that will obey, that will reflect his essence of holiness. Now the sons of Eli were sons of Belial. They knew not the Lord. And, and when we look at this, we see that Eli's sons would, were evil in what they did in God's house. When I was reading and preparing, um, it doesn't say that Eli was evil. He wasn't. Eli wasn't. And the reason we say Eli wasn't evil was because God brought Samuel to be trained or discipled by Eli. And it wasn't that Eli hadn't taught his children. You can train your children. They can still choose God made everybody free moral agents. They get to choose. You can rear your children to be <laughs> respectful and godly, and they can grow up and choose a different way. Y'all have seen it. Yeah, some of y'all will say, oh, I don't know why them children act like that. Their mom and daddy was so good. Their mom and daddy loved the Lord, and they cheering just they just the devil. Their mom and daddy were, were good godly folk. And all they do is stay in the streets. That boy got babies all over town. We say, he, she on drugs everywhere. We, we say that because we, we understand the human condition. Eli's family is no different. But here you have them not leaving the house of God. Good morning, Missionary Wolf Oak. Not leaving the house of God, but staying there and defiling the house of God and the people of God. Here, Eli, this, this, this commentary that I was looking at, he taught them well. He taught his sons well. He gave them good instructions. He even gave them a good example. He probably more than likely even prayed for them. Yet when they grew up, they were sons of Belial. They just figured his daddy, they got sick of eating the same thing. Y'all know when y'all were growing up and folk would bring uh, to the past, y'all who were, you know, preacher's kids or your mama was a missionary or pastor, whatever, and your mama and dad, they would give y'all the pounds. Y'all were always kind of living without or living from paycheck to paycheck and y'all didn't get to get the best. And, and y'all said, that's enough of that. I'm gonna, It's going to be different when I grow up. And you abused the people of God. You took advantage. You said it's going to be different. Imagine the same for Eli's children. 
Here, let's look. Here. This, this, this commentary says that they were sons of Belial, profane, wicked men, and errant rakes, which were evil. They always devised something evil to, to lead the people astray. They did wrong. They knew not the Lord. They were, they were judges and they were priests. They were the law. They, the judges made the laws, but they were also the religious leaders. Double. They made the religious laws. They made the, the social laws, but they were evil men. Here. They were, they, they lived as if they knew nothing about God. This commentary says, parents cannot give grace to their children, nor does it run in the bloodline. We often think that it is a natural progression that if your daddy was a preacher, you're going to be a preacher. Your mama was a, a, a preacher or a missionary or evangelist, you're going to be that. Your daddy or your mama was a this, you're going to do that. It's just not that way all the time. It might, but it's not always that way. Sometimes parents can be as holy as they can be and their children are completely the opposite. The children may respect their parents, but they could be totally different. But in this case, these children were still in the house of God and they were not godly. His sons were priests by birth because that's how it was then. But their character was not sacred. It was not religious. They were awful. Here, this, this goes on and says, they were resident at the fountainhead both of magistry which meant they were a judge and ministry, which means they were priests, and yet they were sons of Belial. They understood what they should do, followed the example of their daddy, but they were sons of Belial. They had had enough of that religious stuff and doing right. They did evil, and the thing was, they were gratifying themselves. When people were giving to them, they were not humbled by that. They thought they deserved it and they deserved more. Okay, here. Their honor, power, and learning made them so much the worse. They used what they knew against the people of God. Yes, there are people like that even now. Good morning, little brother. They did not go serve other gods as those that lived uh, at a distance from the altar. They stayed in the house of God where they got their wealth, wealth and their dignity. But they were worse because they managed the service of God. They profaned the offerings of God. Listen, we it does still happen, right, Elder Ingram? It still happens. What happens also is that people then get angry with God rather than understanding that you're just in the wrong house. You're just in the wrong house. And people should stop supporting those evil leaders. Get out. Isn't that a movie called that? Get out. I didn't watch it. I don't watch everything. I'm sorry. Got to keep my eyes holy. Don't want that stuff invading my mind. I got to go. My time is gone already and I just got to the first page. I, I need you to see the pot. Where are these boys? The scripture calls them the sons of Belial. I want you to see why there was a need for a Samuel. Sometimes what you go through is not just for you. It's for somebody else. It's 7.30. My time is gone. It's for someone else. 
You don't always know that you're going to impact somebody else. I, I use this phrase often. I'm going to stop here. We'll pick this up tomorrow because I, I want to I want to cover this. And I told I told somebody, I said, don't y'all be upset. We're going to work with Hannah a bit. And I'm going to remind you to thank God for Penina because Penina helped produce in Hannah what she needed to get to God to produce a Samuel because Israel needed a Samuel because of the atmosphere of the sons of Eli. What God is working in you is not always just for you. I use this phrase often. We are helpers of one another. We are helpers of one another. We just are. We should be. I need you to see the atmosphere that Samuel was needed for. He couldn't fix it as a little boy, but God was working in him. He was producing something in his life. We're going to pick this up tomorrow. All right. It's early in the week. I'm going to try to concise it as much as I can, but y'all bear with me. All right, let's pray. Father, thank you so much for what you're doing. Let revelation come. Open our eyes, open our ears, open our hearts. Give us discernment that we'll see beyond the surface. Help us to dig deep and to mine for the gold, the wealth you have in these scriptures for us, that we'll receive everything you have for us. Father, I pray that every need of ours would be met. Bless us, bless our children, bless our families. Help us not to give up and lose heart. We know that you're working in us both to will and to do of your good pleasure. Give us grace and give us strength to receive everything you have for us. Thank you for it even now. Be our healer. Our expectation is for good. And we receive it now in Jesus name. Cover our children as they begin to end this school year cover them, protect them from evil influences, from evil children, protect them, cover them in the name of Jesus. We thank you for it and receive it done now in Jesus name. So it is. Amen. All right, y'all. Thank you for sharing. As soon as you came on, thank you for sharing. Type in, catch the replay hashtag grace for today. Uh, I'll upload this to YouTube shortly. Join me in the morning at 7.15 a.m. Central Time. Don't forget, life class this weekend, L-I-F-E, live in faith every day. All right, join me in the morning at 7.15 a.m. Central Time. Until then, remember this time spent in the Word of God is never wasted. And you have been graced for today. Have a great day, everybody. Peace.